Welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 6. Today we're going to be covering learning objects. And we're, I'm going to give a brief overview of Google and video libraries, explain what learning objects are, and then f finish off with, with gamification. So going back to TPAC, you might remember that TPAC was related to technical, pedagogical, and content knowledge. Um, by now you would have still got your content knowledge and have been learning your pedagogical knowledge. This, le this video is going to really be, going to be covering technical knowledge combined with content knowledge. So Google, so um, it's recently been um, identified through some TED videos that Google is actually tailored towards an individual. So depending on your who you are and your what co computer you're using, what browser you're using, where you're actually using it, will depend on the information that you're actually given. So if I go to um, Safari and I do put in type in learning objects, you notice that the fifth Brisbane Catholic Education learning objects, that's in Safari. However, if I actually go to Camino and look at it, I actually come up with quite a lot different results. So one of the things I'm going to get you guys to do is Put in learning objects and ident find out what is the fifth website that you come up with and just grab that and add it to our discussion board just to see how many different answers we get. Now to actually use Google, if you go to your Google page and type in any piece of uh, work that you're interested in. So this week we're going to look at um, focus on music, for example, Mozart. Now say I want an actual PowerPoint. I want to do a PowerPoint on Mozart. If I go to advanced search, there's a whole heap of um, restrict, um, restrictions or filters I can use. Now, the one I'm just going to focus on here is you've got site or domain. So if you put in something like .edu, then it's actually going to be educational organizations. So you know it's going to be better quality. But if I go in here to filter type, I can choose to look up just PowerPoints go advanced search and now you can see that I've got Mozart coming up on all of these are PowerPoints for Mozart have a look see what it's going to look like and go yeah sure personally I download about the first five or six and then look at them to say see if they're appropriate for what I want and you can see okay and we can have a look and there's a PowerPoint now that took me about five seconds to find this PowerPoint I don't know how many times I see teachers going and spending hours and hours preparing PowerPoints when realistically there is hundreds or, or thousands of teachers doing exactly the same thing. So why not share your PowerPoints? Um, if you go and find a good PowerPoint, maybe change the background, maybe edit it, maybe use parts of it, um, work out what's going to be appropriate for you and what's not. Check with the um, copyright to see if it's okay to use. Otherwise, um, when I'm in class, if I'm using a PowerPoint that belongs to someone else, I tell the students, this, I never made this, this belongs to someone else. However, instead of doing PowerPoint, we could also have done um, a .swf, which is a shockwave file. No idea what, again, what it is. Oh, there you go, An animation. So. Video libraries. So instead of using um, Google, YouTube is supposedly the second or third um, most used search engine in the world. Uh, however, some YouTube, uh, sometimes YouTube is blocked by schools. Another one you can use instead of that is TeacherTube. Um, TeacherTube is, is uses filters um, and it's protected so you know that anything you come up with is going to be good. Um, and I've also got these other ones here. YouTube, which you probably have already seen. Um, we, I, I personally have my own account so I can log in and it brings up the stuff that I like to watch. TeacherTube, um, it prefers you to log in to get, actually get your stuff. So I would suggest click on the free sign up and um, log in. Um, Teacher TV uh, is a company that started up in, in England and it has a range of videos showing you how to do stuff. Uh, again, it prefers you to log in and set up your account. It's very simple. Um, TED is thinkers, entrepreneurs, and designers, and this is a conference that's held every year uh, at the TED Talks. Um, 
and they do lectures and these are amazing lectures they're the best people in the world supposedly um giving lots of um discussions and and the last one which i'm going to direct you is the atsil national professional standards of teachers which is what the ttf and tpac is all based upon um i've got the link to this this is actually um illustrations of practice done by uh, previous uh, student teachers from all across the country they've filmed what they've been doing and then they're trying to explain how they're doing it and it gives you an, uh, um, an example of what a teacher should be doing at graduate level proficient level which is people who are already teaching highly accomplished and lead now of course there's not very many examples of this uh, these are all um, were meant to be graduate standards but some of them were actually considered to be much higher um, and you can look up uh, also by your uh, national professional standards for teachers and here they're actually demonstrating examples of each of these different fields. Learning objects. Now a learning object, learning objects are a package lesson. So it's got some content, it's got some things you can practice and some form of testing. Uh, it's all packaged up in one thing. Uh, quite often used for uh, digital education. Um, and you can see here the three things it needs to include is your content, the activity, and then the context that it's going to be used within. Best place for learning items is Learning Federation Objects. And the, this originated from a government program where they spent a huge amount of money, millions of dollars, setting up these objects. And these are things that you can use in your classroom on a, on a interactive whiteboard or on a projector using a computer or whatever I'm gonna get the links here look up learning federation I'll just do it so learning federation and pretty much the first one hopefully depends on how your Google search comes up first thing you're gonna to have to do is on the left hand side it says teaching teachers for the future Te uh, um, not registered click here so this is so you're gonna be if otherwise you won't be able to get to any of the fields now because you uh, have an email address at university you will be able to Fill in your details. Current role is a for you all will be a teacher trainee. And under here, make sure that this is your Adelaide.edu um, account and then put in a password and go sign in. And what you can do is you can actually look for, um, and there's a whole range of things. They, they may be videos, archived uh, videos or pictures, audios. The learning object is the multimedia, multi-use informational stuff. Now, um, I've gone for agriculture this time. And one thing I've looked up is I just put in agriculture, um, come up with this eco farm. And so basically what you need to do is it's a game where you're building your farm or, or looking after your farm and it's it tells you step through so here's my information it's explain all the different things about it so i can look up about trees and what they're used for and so on and once i've done that i can go okay i want to look at my crop paddock and i want to remove the existing trees for some reason i'm not going to bother going into this and why we do why it's done all um once you're finished, you actually go, okay, show me my report. And it shows me what, what I need to do. And it goes over a number of years. So the students actually learn the agricultural stuff. They learn about managing farmland, learn about the environment and so on. So cool little learning tool. Skirtle is another uh, learning object page. Again, you can do, you've got similar things and it's all based around the um, the learning federation objects I could look up something for music and then once I get in here I might go you know what I only want years 9 and 10 and I only want learning objects and then I can go just give me those filters and it's coming up with 33 things now this sonic space future mall I already have loaded up now you may or not, may not be able to hear this but this is supposedly a pathway walking through and it's listing the different things in the mall. So you're using your um, your sound ability to work out what you've walked past within the mall. You then, what you need to do is listen to each of these things and pull them off. 
Okay, I heard that one. Right, pull them off and, and go through and and identify different things that you may have heard. And then you would build them and you're trying to create the exact same soundscape. A cool little learning object. The students are going through and learning stuff on their own. Um, and at the end of it, it gives you a test and you have to deduce whether or not you've learned the, the thing or not. Okay, so that's Scoodle. Um, the next ones I'm just gonna skip over fairly quickly. Uh, Merlo is a big company from California who started this quite a long time ago. Um, but again, they have uh, learning materials in here um, and it, it's very similar. Basic, it's American, so sometimes it's frustrating because you won't get the stuff that you really want or it focuses on other things. And a lot of these are links to other websites. So one of the ones I've pulled out of this is um, Misunderstood Minds, so it's a psychological one or ESL, whatever. And it's, for example, it's got here, um, have a look at what it's like if you're reading with distractions. And you go begin. And it says, all right, try and read this. And then brings up, now, I'm not doing anything now. It's actually just trying to distract me uh, while I'm reading. And then once, you, once, once you're finished, it'll actually go, right, reading so on now answer these questions. So very, very quick. And you can get students to actually have a read and understand what it's like to deal with disabilities. TES is a British version of the same thing. And that pretty much covers in some examples of learning objects. Two examples of gamification are serious games, and, and we've spoken about Mathletics before. Serious games are a company that produces games that are designed to be a playable game, but the end result is you're actually learning for work. So for example, this is a laparoscopy or keyhole surgery and uses two robotic arms. The doctor actually has to learn how to do this surgery. Um, it's quite a lot different to what they would be doing normally. And so you actually have to go through some testing. Now what they found was they, they have these huge testing skill work, work areas, uh, massive great big areas with all different machines there. And the doctors come in and they go, oh, this is kind of fun. They do it for the first day and they found that it was very, very hard to get them to come back the second day they, because they just found it boring. You're just picking up little bowls and transferring them or stacking cones or whatever. So the, the skills were there, but there was just, it was boring and no fun. Um, there's a company called Serious Games and Serious Games, this is an example, I'll just bring it up now. So this is an example, here's the person um, and the two laparoscopy uh, um, tools that they have. And you can see here, you're actually having to use the tools um, to manipulate your environment. So here you've got someone's trying to pick stuff up and transfer it to a little bucket and so on. It's actually using Wii controllers with the nunchucks to control things and it's representing exactly the same controls and techniques you need to use to conduct your laparoscopy. So gamification, so it's an interesting concept, learning through play and it's almost learning by ambush. Um, the students sometimes don't even realize they're learning that but they're actually doing it for fun. Okay, so discussion board this week. Um, I've discussed Google is no longer ubiquitous, all right? So it's tailored to each individual person um, and what you're seeing. So what I want you to do is look up the learning object in Google and just write down what the fifth item on Google search is. Very simple, write it down. So it'll just be a single, a single line or a single website. Um, so then we can see if it's different for everyone else. Um, the second one, choose one of the websites, so Learning Federation or Scoot or whatever, and identified one learning object from that. So do a search for whatever field you, you want to focus on, and I add it to the discussion boards and identify how you'd use that in your classroom, whether it's good, whether it's bad, possibilities. And the third one is gamification. What I want you to do is identify a game, uh, like what game you might play in your classroom to promote learning by competition. So this will be interesting to actually have a look at what games other people can come up with. And finally, national professional standards that we've covered is um, standard two, so know the content and how to teach it. Number three is um, how to plan effective teaching uh, and learning. And the last one is um, number six, which is engaging professional learning. All right, good luck.